So uh, on with our uh, presentation. And what I think you'll find particularly interesting this morning is that uh, a number of our speakers have chosen to use a music track um, to introduce them. And maybe this uh, has a, a good clue of the direction of our first presentation. Rain and shine, the pick state on my mind. Stash low on the beats, got an ounce of kind. B A, believe that I'm a go for mine. Till I'm messed up, gotta get my cash up. Rain and shine. We've been welcomed on stage by our first speakers, Francesc uh, Corbero Vinals. Uh, communications director Nissan Iberia, who's at the lectern, and he'll be uh, joined in this presentation by Sergi Gill. Thank you very much, Barry. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to, to do this first presentation of the day. Um, I hope all of you are uh, wake up now, and I will try to, to, to explain you a story about the, the brand opinion and how important it is to measure the brand opinion for Nissan in order to contribute uh, to the revenue of the company. Quickly on the first topic, well, this is the brand promise of Nissan today uh, all over the world. It's to deliver innovation and excitement for everyone. I think those uh, subjects, those topics are absolutely key for us to be different in front of our competitors and also to deliver this brand promise to other customers. It's key to deliver, uh, to do it every day in everything we do in our job every day. It is necessary to do it uh, clearly because in this, first, in this 20, 21st century, everything is absolutely different than the 10 years ago. The way our, our customers, the way we all decide today, which is the car we're gonna, we're gonna buy, it is absolutely different. The, the approach is uh, through internet, the approach is through social media, the approach is to sharing our opinions with our colleagues, uh, family, friends, using probably social media much more than any other communication channel. And this is because we have to change our mindset and the way we communicate to all our customers. Also, because we need to prepare the brand for this digital era, it is absolutely different the way we communicate. I remember when I started 22 years ago in communication for different kind of organizations. My, my, my mindset was prepared to work with the traditional media, the newspapers, the radio, and on TV. Digital world is absolutely different. It is something that it, uh, it, it, it happens every day, uh, online, in the real time, and we have to be ready for that, and the communication also must be prepared for this big challenge. Also because we have an incredible uh, business uh, challenge uh, globally as a company, we need to achieve 8% of the market share all over the world, and also we want to assure every year 8% of uh, sustainable revenues for the company. That is not possible if we have a not, not a big and a power brand. This is because Nissan Power 88 starts with Nissan Power, the brand. We have to empower the brand very much. Also because we have to sell more cars. We, we really believe, I really believe personally, that brand opinion is key in the purchase funnel. I think if we increase our brand opinion, we're gonna sell much more cars because the purchase intention will increase dramatically. It is because we have to prepare the communication for that. Also, uh, I think in communication, probably all of us will, will share the same idea, which is that internal comms is always something apart. We always talk about external communication and we forget, in my case, for instance, in Spain, I have more than 5,000 employees, that means it's almost 5,000 PR colleagues. It's almost 5,000 brand ambassadors. And I need to work with them also. And I need to prepare my communication channels for, for them. And I need to introduce them in the social media network also. If I do that, if we do that, we probably will achieve the goals we need to achieve in terms of brand opinion, because we will have 5,000 brand ambassadors working all together in the same direction. 
to do that, uh, I think that the most important thing to do it, it's, it's the passion. Uh, I, I can do my work without passion. I, I, I work uh, every day. Uh, I remember yesterday I'm going to sleep. I went to sleep a little bit late. I wake up this morning very early at 6 o'clock because I need to prepare my presentation in English, something that I, it's not used to me to do it every day. And I, I need to, trans, to translate to you, to transmit to you my message. And I, I can do that without patience. We need to be passionate when we do our job. And I think this is, this is absolutely key. Also, we need to have a, an internal culture, a, a company culture, which uh, help us to deliver this brand promise every day. Communication, our products, and the way we do the things every day, everything we do must, in some manner, transmit this brand promise, which is innovation and excitement for everyone. Two last uh, key aspects of this, uh, of this way to do the things for me is to work as a team. It is not, it is not easy to work as a team today. We are living in a world which the, uh, the speed concept is absolutely uh, in our life. It means everything is in a high speed. And it's very difficult sometimes to find the time to share with our colleagues in different functions, in finance, in after sales, in sales, in marketing, etc. But we need to assure that if we do it, again, we will work as a team. That means that we have more hands, more eyes, more ears. And that the way we communicate, the way we work, but we will be much more powerful. And the last key question is to work also with our suppliers, uh, suppliers like like Acceso, who is working closer to us to deliver, to help us to find this is which is the best way to measure what we are doing every day in order to take the best decisions in our communication. In, in Spain and uh, globally in the world. We need to measure a lot of topics to assure this brand promise. Loyalty, familiarity, brand opinion, of course, uh, purchase intention, the return of investment of the events we organize. And we are doing this for many time. Probably at the very beginning, we just measure the things in, in, from the quantity, uh, quantitative aspects or the, the quantitative point of view, which is absolutely not enough. Today we need these quality aspects of our communication in order to be sure that what we are talking, what we are trying to deliver to all of our customers and fans is exactly what we want to deliver and not another kind of message. It is because we have to change our way to measure to this 60, uh, 360 degrees uh, measurement system from the traditional media to the social media observing the whole communication channels and taking into account the tone of voice that we receive from the media, but also which is the tone of voice of the, of the dialogue in the social networks uh, regarding the whole stakeholders. If we can measure that, probably we will be much more closer to assure that what we are doing in communication contributes clearly in the purchase funnel, and that means, in my, my, uh, my point of view, that means to assure that PR function, communication function, is a revenue generator. This is my personal challenge since I started in this field. I want to be a revenue generation for my company. I want to be treated and I want to be uh, listened in the communication in the, in the executive management committee as a revenue generator as the rest of the functions of our organizations. Sorry, Sergei. <laughs> Sergi is going to introduce now how they help us to do that. Thank you. So the first thing we do is understanding the business problem, what are Francesc's needs and Nissan needs, uh, because our objective will be to measure how communication contributes to that, to that business objective. Uh, and as in many other companies, Nissan looks at the purchase funnel. So how do we go? from awareness to recommendation. Uh, and that is where we focus our measurement to bring that results for the company. How do we do it? For each, for each step of the purchase funnel, we will then define what are the communication objectives or the communication strategy that we will follow to achieve that goal. Then we will decide uh, which media do we have to look at? Uh, where is the relevant information to look at? And finally, define the metrics that will help us taking decisions. 
in Nissan, <coughs> we may basically dif divide the communication objectives and strategies in, in, in three steps. First thing is communication positioning and corporate reputation. This will bring awareness. Second is company and product familiarity and favora favora la favorability. Sorry, it's 8.30. <laughs> and finally, product differentiation. Of course, we will use different media for each different objective and metrics will be different. Let's take a very fast look at each of those. If we go back to the brand positioning of Nissan, <clears throat> what we do, what we will do here is define and look for every, all the attributes that define each of the value, and then identify how every piece of new, every piece of conversation is supporting uh, each of those attributes. As for corporate reputation, we divide it or split it in two parts. One is the proactive one, and, and here sustainability is the main attribute Nissan wants to uh, bring forward. And the second one is a more defensive one, uh, and we look at the reputational risks. Those are specific risks for automotive industry, but also for Nissan, who has four production plants in, in, in Spain with the risks that that could bring. Finally, for product differentiation, and that would pr probably mean changing also the media, we look for specialized media, for example, uh, conversations, etc. Here we, bring, we, we try to analyze the four uh, attributes that Nissan wants to bring to, the, to, the, to their consumers. Quality, security, experience, and design. So once we have designed th the three communication strategies and all the metrics that will define those, we define different dashboards to help Francesc take decisions. Thank you, Sergi. Exactly, the, uh, the, the tools that Acceso deliver to us in different kinds of periods along the, the year, it's uh, the tools we have to use uh, in order to take the best decisions to fill the gap between where we are and where we want to go or when we want to stay in terms of communication. This is uh, a very simple example. I'm sorry because it's full of that and probably it's not easy for you to, 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 to observe, but. The main thing is that we split communication in four main areas, which is the corporate communication, the product communication, which is probably the most important pillar for automotive company. And then there are two areas of differentiation which are related to our brand promise, which is innovation and excitement. We need to know how each one of those areas contribute every week, this is a weekly report, in our communication, in our brand communication. This is key for us. And it is absolutely useful. Every week we can, we can see our performance on top of this, um, this is, uh, slide. We can see which are the peaks and valleys in terms of communication, which is the tone of voice in this communication along the week, if it's positive, neutral, or negative, and why. And also, we can benchmark our communication with a benchmark in the market, today Volkswagen, at least in Spain, and our first competitor in terms of Asian brand, which is Toyota. I need to track those brands every week in order to know what they are doing. It's not a question to do exactly the same. It's just a question to know what they are doing and how they perform in their communication related to what we are doing. And then how we, also it's important for us to know if we are contributing to the brand communication, to the brand opinion based on the traditional media, which is the gray part of the cake down on the left, or the blue part, which is the internet or digital communication. As you can see, digital communication every day gain much more part of this cake of the, of the communication, which is absolutely normal. Uh, in terms of the automotive world, I don't know, honestly, how many dot coms we have today in Spain talking about automotive. I don't know. Because every day, probably, uh, there are three new dot coms uh, which born this morning in Madrid and two else in Sevilla and one more in Barcelona. I don't know, honestly. I, I know perfectly well because there are different rankings of dot coms, which are the top 10, the tw tw top 25 in terms of unique visitors, etc. And those are probably my 80% of total output, and I have to observe those ones. But this is a tracking based on this media list, tier one, tier two, tier three. 
and I receive from Acceso this weekly report every week. This is the second part of the weekly report, which uh, let me know exactly which is my presence in media, pre, uh, print or online, in terms of mention, in terms of comparison between different products of our competitors, or if it's a report, that means in, in the magazines of the automotive world, we are very pleased to have sometimes, we, but the, com the competitors also, three, four, or six pages a report about one of our products. This is perfect for us, of course, to communicate our brand promise in terms of our products or in corporate communication also. Uh, to have a cover page, it's key for all of us in, in our market. And if we can have a comparison in, in the cover page, I know it's, it's really small and, and you can see it, but it's a comparison between our latest product, the Juke Nismo, and one of the mini Pac-Man, mini is our competitor in this segment of cars, the B segment. To be in the cover and to win for this magazine, which is probably one of the most important in Spain, to win this battle between the mini Pac-Man, give us a lot of awareness and a lot of good opinion about our brand promise. Also, I would like to know a part of our brand ranking, where we are in terms of news items or news in terms of a space and pages or the audience we get, I also need to know where are my products based on the ranking of products. As you can see in that week, which was at the latest weeks of, of last month in May, Nissan Leaf, my, uh, our electric 100 electric car, and our Nissan Juke, probably today the most important car we have in the whole markets, in the B segment, uh, became in the top 10 products communicated during the week in Spain. To, to get all of this data, it's key for us to know what, what, where we are, what we are doing, and what, we are, what our competitors are doing also in the same period of time. And latest uh, two slides is regarding what Sergi explained. This is a new job that we work together, both companies, to define these three territories of tracking our brand promise which is the brand positioning, the corporate reputation, sorry, and the product differentiation. After we decide which are the metrics, which are the attributes we want to measure, we finally get this new report that the other one was absolutely quantitative and uh, just the tone of voice was there. This is absolutely key. This is clearly about the tone of voice. Now we know, based on those attributes, in terms of items and in terms of audience, how we perform our brand promise. If we have positive feedback from the media and also in the online, in the, in the dialogue between the customers and fans, and where are the risks? As you can see on the bottom of the page, there is a red boxes uh, in the quality attribute of the products, which is for us, as Sergi mentioned at the beginning, one of the topers risk we have to face in our automotive world is quality. As soon as we realize that there is a quality issue in the market, we have to go deeper in the problem to know which is the problem itself and then to prepare the solution. This is another part of this report. General media, economic media, specialized media. Those are the three different levels of, uh, of media lists that we work with every week, every day. The general media is the ones, uh, some specific magazines from the big newspapers in Spain, which are talking about motor sports or talking about automotive world. The economic media, which I use particularly for the corporate communication uh, regarding our manufacturing plants in Spain. And then the specialized media, which is absolutely uh, focusing the automotive markets and world. But in three cases, we observe that we have a, a quality issue in all the media. In the corporate media was clearly negative, there's no tone of voice positive, there's no neutral. The, the economic media is absolutely uh, clear in their explanations. If a company like Toyota, probably most of you remember the problem Toyota faced at least three years or four years ago uh, regarding a, a quality issue in one of these products. And as soon as Nissan has one of those quality recall campaigns that some brands have to deliver or have, has to do when we detect a problem in one of our products, Corporate media immediately report that to the whole stakeholders, and we have to be aware of that. Well, finally, the summary. 
uh, for me, the most important thing, Empower the Brand is the first objective for us to achieve our global uh, business goals. And Empower the Brand, the only way to empower the brand is to measure what we are doing in terms of communication. In the digital era also, we need to prepare our communication and our brand to deliver the brand promise. And finally, for me, three clear objectives why we have to measure what we are doing. Better understanding about the value of PR in the business strategy and regarding the purchase funnel. Use the measurement tools to make every day much more effect effective and efficient communication. And finally, uh, have trustable reporting, which is sometimes it's, it's not uh, quite good because we don't define the clear briefing from the companies like Accession in order then to work with us to prepare the best tools to take decisions. Thank you very much. I know that 15 minutes is sometimes not enough. My English was not good enough also, but I hope that you receive from me a clear message. Measurement is key for me to be a revenue generator, which is I want to be. Thank you very much. Stay at the microphone, Sergi. You yeah. too. Uh, we're going to take questions now. Um, can I ask in our usual way, you um, say who you are and what your company is. Do we have a first question on the front row? Hi, I'm Jody Kennedy from Sada. Um, I love your idea about being a revenue generator. I think that's terrific. Um, I think we all aspire to that in the communications function, so thank you. I love, love the way they frame that. There's some, a lot of great data up there. My question for both of you is, um, how do you take that data and translate it into and quantify it into how you are demonstrating your impact? I mean, how do you make the leap from this data to revenue generator, to your, to your aspiration? You want to first answer how we measure? No? Okay. We, I think uh, based on this new report that Acceso prepared for us, we are at the la latest step to really achieve what I want, which is how PR contribute in the purchase funnel. How we measure the purchase funnel. This is a brand tracking, uh, made it globally for our company every quarter. The, the, the questionnaire we use globally from different um, um, groups of stakeholders all over the world, uh, no pay attention about how uh, we communicate as an organization, which are the channels we use to communicate. They only pay attention about advertising, and they only pay attention about how the dealers work with the stakeholders, customers, or potentials. What we need to demonstrate through this uh, media report, or th this metrics report, is that we have to, uh, to m improve our brand tracking, introducing the communication aspects of the company in order to assure that the percentage uh, of, uh, which is the percentage of PR in the contribution on the purchase funnel. Let me go easily. Advertising is huge budget, and they are able to create a lot of buzz and noise in the media based on advertising. This is the awareness. But what, how, we, how we convert this awareness into familiarity and good opinion, I really believe is a very, uh, uh, a very specific work that the PR people are working every day. It, I believe PR is the group of people who, are, who, are, who were working in the messaging, in the key messages, in the, in the right way, using the right channels and the good magazines. But if we don't track this in the brand tracking, if we just pay attention about the big campaign advertising, uh, we lose this um, quality data. And it is because we, for many years, we are not in the brand tracking and we cannot demonstrate how PR is really contributing in this good opinion and how to improve the good opinion in order to improve the purchase funnel. I think the answer is too long, but uh, I hope I answer you. Let, let, let me make it a little bit longer. Okay. Uh, we, we, we want to help Francesc and we haven't still helped him uh, until the end of the journey. Uh, the end of the journey will be when he can demonstrate that contribution to the purchase funnel, and we haven't gotten to that yet. But now he has the information on which elements uh, contribute to that for each step. So 
the work we have together now is bringing questions to the questionnaires where they get the purchase final information so that they can segment uh, how communication or these attributes that they are working with uh, are brought to their consumers. And then uh, hopefully we will get that information to them, uh, connect both, both worlds, okay? I thank Sergi for his explanation. It's much better than mine. <laughs> So it was, a great, it was a great question, good answer, expansive answer. Other questions, please, of uh, Francesc and Sergi during the break. Thank you to you both. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.